Coming up on the, the City of Grace King. Family Ministries oh, broadcast. Oh, hear this in the name of Lord Jesus. That's the difference between what you can do and what God can do. The anointing bridge is the gap. The anointing steps in when you can't do it and provides a way for it to be done. And what I found out about the anointing, when the anointing comes in your life, you don't have a choice. The power of God starts operating on side of you, and now things you were not capable of. I'm speaking into your 2018. You better grab this. We are a family spreading the word of God to the nations. With open arms, we love one another, fulfilling our destiny. church people the bible says in the last day the number one attack against the church is going to be that people will be offended in the church and timothy says people are going to depart from the faith tell somebody say look to your left look to your right tell them you better be sitting here next year Tell them, and bring a cousin. Because, because according, listen, no, listen to me, church people. Listen, because according to the Bible, the Bible says Satan walks about as a roaring lion. He's looking to see, who, who can I offend and get them out of the kingdom? Who, can I upset you and get you out? Can, can I hurt your feelings and get you out? Can I upset you and get you out? Can I get you upset? Who, 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 who can I upset and get out of the kingdom? Because if I can get you out of the kingdom, I don't have to worry about fighting you because you understand, now listen to me, let me give you theology. The church is the most powerful entity in the universe. That's why the devil doesn't want you in here. You don't believe me? You remember Jesus says, watch this, no watch this. He says, he says, he says, Peter, who do men say that I am? And Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and Jesus says, Jesus, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, sovereign by Jonah, but such as my father in heaven. And he says, you are the, the rock. And upon this rock, that word rock means, he says Petra, which means pebble, but upon this Petros rock, I will build my church, my church, my, my church. And he says, and, and watch this, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. He didn't say the gates of hell could not prevail against me individually. So if I can get you out of the church, I can't defeat the church, but I can defeat you by yourself. No, the church ain't perfect. You ain't sitting next to anybody perfect. Let me give you the revelation so that you will give your neighbor a break. Let me give you the revelation so you will stop tripping on you. Let me give you the revelation so you will stop being so hard on your neighbor. Your neighbor is a trip. Does that help anybody? So that you'll stop being hard on them, you'll stop expecting perfection, you'll stop misunderstanding them, you'll stop being hard on them and expecting them to be perfect. Your neighbor is very imperfect. They got issues, they got problems, they got stuff. Sometimes they got bad days, sometimes they may have bad breath, whatever it is. Your, your ish, your neighbor, your neighbor is imperfect, but so are you. So before I start blaming your neighbor, I got to look at myself. Before I start getting on them, I got to say, God, what, what are you trying to do inside of me? Because cause maybe, maybe God, I got to change because this is the principle. But it's the principle. Everything in life is sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping. Uh, if, you, if you don't sow anything today, you have no right for a harvest tomorrow. Sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping. If you don't sow today, you don't have a right for a harvest tomorrow. A, 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 a farmer is, 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 is idiotic to go to look for a harvest when he never planted a seed. So, so if everything is sowing and reaping, sometimes I've got to sow change 
in order to see change. See, what we want is we want to see change, then we'll start sowing some differences. God says, no, you be what you want them to be. Sometimes they don't know you got to be the example of what a child of God looks like. Be thou an example of a, belie of a believer in word, in conversation, in deed. In other words, I got to be what I want to see. I got to stop wanting you to change, and maybe I need to change. Maybe the real issue is me. And maybe God says, you got to be different in order to help them be different. All right, so here you go. Let's go. Let's finish this thing up. Because, because now, now I realize, as the church, the most powerful thing I can win with is love. Love beats evil. Whenever you are in a difficult situation, God says, increase your love life. Whenever you are under attack, increase your love life. Whenever things are going bad, increase your love life. Love wins every single time. Increase your love life. When you increase your love life, you have God intervening. Yeah, but you don't know, Bishop. You don't know how they treated me. Love them anyway. Get, get, out your, get out your feelings. Get out stop fighting yourself in the flesh and love them anyway. Well, what does that mean, love? You keep telling me to love. What does that mean, love? Why I got, what does love mean? Well, I'm glad you asked this. First of all, church people realize that all this shouting we do in church and all this clapping we do in church and all this worship we do in church, it pales in comparison to the power of love. Let me, let me help you out. Listen to me carefully. There is nothing that laying of hands can do for you that works permanently if there's no love in your life. And in Corinthians, Paul got a problem with the church because he says, you know what y'all doing? You're going the easy road. You're taking the easy way out. He says, what you're doing as a church, the body of Christ, is you are excited about gifts, but you're forgetting about the fruit. You, you got all these gifts. I can lay hands on people and they'll fall out and I can speak in tongues, but you can't speak to your neighbor. How is God going to use you and you got a greasy, nasty attitude? You're telling people off all the time on Facebook. You're always mad at somebody. You're texting people off. You're, but yet, here you are sanctified. How come none of that religion got to your fingers? Don't tell me the power of God to heal until I see the power of God work on your attitude. I want to see people fall out. I want to see people be nice. Oh, okay. Okay. See, see, look at, look, 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 look at what it says. Paul asked this question. He says, y'all, y'all are so excited about offices in the church and so excited about the gifts and so excited about, Paul says, are all apostles? Of course not. Are all prophets? Everybody want a prophecy. Everybody want a prophecy. Are all prophets? No. Listen, you wouldn't need as many prophecies if you prayed. When Jesus was walking on earth, Jesus got his answers through prayer. Prophecy just confirms what God already spoke that was in his word. Prophecy is the third leg of the situation. Prophecy is never first. Prophecy is third. The first is my prayer life. I hear from, no, excuse me. The first is the word of God. What does the word of God say? The second is, okay, it's confirmed in my prayer life. God speaks it in my heart. And the third People don't want to pray, and people don't want to go before the Lord, and people don't want to have a prayer life, but yet they want the prophecy. God says, no, talk to me first. All right, let me help my quiet people. I want a prophecy. Maybe you need to go pray first. Because, see, you got to be careful about having an itching ear, because the devil may tell you something instead of God. The Bible says in the last days, people will hire folks with itching ears to tell them what they want to hear. Yeah. 
And so what we got in church is that all apostles know everybody ain't an apostle. All prophets know everybody's not a prophet. All teachers are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healings, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. He says, but they covet earnestly. They really want the best gifts. People fight for the best gifts in church. Everybody wants an apostle. Everybody wants a prophet. Everybody wants a title. Wants a, everybody wants a title. Do y'all know, do y'all understand what that really meant in, in Paul's day when Paul said, Paul said something really amazing. He says, not everybody ought to want to be teachers. He says, because if so, you are judged by a higher level of qualification. God says, the moment you start speaking it, he says, you better start living it. Watch this. He says, watch this. He says, everybody wants the gifts. Everybody wants to show out. Everybody wants a platform. He says, and you want to prophesy your way to your breakthrough. But look at what Paul says. Paul says, yet I show you a more excellent way. What? Well, I thought prophecy. No, Paul said there's something better than that. In fact, if I went down to the bottom, it says prophecy one day is going to cease. There'll be no more prophecies. When Jesus returned, there's no more prophecies. I'm with God. I already know what's going on. He said, there, no more, there be no speaking in tongues because God says we we'll already have heavenly language. We'll be speaking together. We'll be speaking with the rate of thought. So I, I won't need tongues. He says, prophecy's going to cease. He says, he, says, he says, all of these gifts are going to cease. He says, but the one thing that's going to always outlast everything is how we treat each other. How we treat each other when we've been offended. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. All right? I'm going to take you to another level in just a minute. Put a pin there. So you say you love people? Look at what he says. He says, if I speak with eloquence of angelic ecstasy, but I don't have love, I am nothing. But a cranking of rusty gate. If I speak of God's word with power, it says, if you're a pastor and you're a preacher and you're nasty, if you're a pastor and you're a preacher and you're untouchable, if you're a pastor and you're a preacher and you still exist in pride, listen to me, the higher up God brings you, the more you better be humble. Because you can't do this. All right, let me give you 10 seconds. You see what's going on right here? Let me give you the revelation. Let me give you the revelation. This is not Joel Peebles. You better hear my, this, this, this ain't me. This, I, I can't do this. I don't even really want to do this. I never asked to be a speaker. I never asked to be a preacher. I never asked to be a pastor. I never asked to be a bishop. In fact, every time it happened, it came to me. I didn't really want it. Why? Because I knew that when you did this, number one, people looked at you. Like y'all looked at me. And I didn't necessarily feel comfortable about speaking in front of people. But I realized something. When you do this right, it ain't you anyway. When, when you do this right, I'm trying to help somebody, there are some things that, that God, God has spoken in your heart, and you start saying, God, I can't do it. I don't have the ability. I don't have the connection. I don't have the capacity. God says, that's okay, because there's one thing you do have. That's the anointing. See, I'm trying to help somebody. The anointing Oh, y'all better hear this in the name of Lord Jesus. That's the difference between what you can do and what God can do. The anointing bridge is the gap. The anointing steps in when you can't do it and provides a way for it to be done. And what I found out about the anointing, when the anointing comes in your life, you don't have a choice. The power of God starts operating on side of you, and now things you were not capable of. I'm speaking into your 2018. You better grab this. Things you were not capable of. I'm speaking to you in 2018. You better grab this. Things you were not capable of. The anointing of God is going to come upon you. Proof, proof. Samson didn't walk around with power. Samson didn't walk around beating up Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. The Bible says when Samson's strength came on, it says, and the Spirit of God fell on him. May the Spirit of God fall on you right now in the name of Lord Jesus. May God's power and anointing fall. Oh, I don't know who I'm speaking to. May the Spirit of God fall upon you right now in the name, Lord Jesus. And may God use you like you have never. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. 
but I'm talking to somebody in a frustrated season right now where it seems like things aren't moving. May the spirit of the anointing of God begin to fall on your life right now and may God use you beyond your expectation in the name, Lord Jesus, so be it. I don't know who received that, but if I were you, I would grab that. I would grab that. I would grab that. I would grab that. I got to go. Uh, in fact, somebody turn real quickly to 1 Corinthians. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, because I want to read this out of the KJV before you leave, because I, I want you to see this. It says, it says, watch this. It says, if I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake and be burned as a martyr, it says, but I have not love, I've gotten nowhere. Now that's, that means if I do things, if I do it right with the wrong attitude, I still get no benefit. Let me say that again. If I do the right thing, you ever had somebody wait on you and they waited on you, but they had an attitude? Especially this holiday. I don't know what devil got into some folk this holiday. These behind some cash registers. I, I, I found myself ministry in ministry mode every time I went, how are you doing? Are you okay? I pray for you. May God's grace be on your life. Everybody was just mad. It was like, how are you doing? I'm fine. I was like, woo -hoo -hoo, Father, help him, Jesus. Throw some anointing, give me some oil, Father. I almost bought out the water in the store, just walk around every cap. Oh, you, 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 you. He says, if you do the right thing with a wrong attitude, you'll never work your way out of the job you're at with a bad attitude. And you'll never, and the problem is you see everybody else with a bad attitude working the same job, and so association brings on a simulation. But because you act their way, you'll get their results. In order to get better results, you've got to do better. You be the one smiling. Bring it every time you walk in. When you walk in, the glory walk. Don't tell me you got God and you can't have love. 1 John chapter 4, beloved, let us love one another. For everyone that is born of God knoweth God and loveth God. He that loveth not, he that loveth not, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. God is love and love is God. God's makeup is love and the makeup, you cannot have God without love and you cannot have love without God. They exist together. God is love. That's the first time in the word the Bible tells you what God is. The, uh, the, very, the very essence of God is love. You cannot have love without God. You cannot have God without love. Now, if I say I have God and I have no love, I actually don't have God. Now, if I say I have love and I have no God, I actually don't have God. In order for me to have God, I've got to have love. In order for me to have love, I've got to have God. So if you got God, you ought to be loving. I'm finished. Says, so what? So you say, says, it says, says, so no matter what you say or what you believe, it says, or what you do, he says, you are, he says, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for itself. And then later on in the scripture, I just thought I'd throw this one in. Love doesn't keep a score of the sins of others. Okay, you know how you do. You're mad at somebody, but what you're mad about is really small. It, it really is small. It, it, what you're mad about them is so small, but you just had an attitude anyway. So what you got to do is think of ways to validate your reason to have an attitude. So what you start doing is you start going back in the past. Back in 1936. Year. And so now, in order to validate your present anger, which is irrelevant and stupid, you got to go back to a whole bunch of stuff and drag that in to support your present reason for being mad. Y'all don't want to tell the truth, church people. And you know the real issue is you just got an attitude. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed. You got situations going on, and you need to repent for yourself. But you need to validate your reason to have the quiet and not talk to people. You need to validate your reason to be angry. So you start drawing all this stuff from old stuff, and then you start missing reinterpreting stuff that used to happen just so you can feel better about being angry. And you call yourself spirit-filled. 
If you are filled with the Spirit, you don't have room for stupidity. You got to grow up out of that stuff because that stuff holds back a saint of God. It destroys relationships and it prevents God from working on our behalf. I better quit because y'all looking at me all funny. Last scripture, last scripture, because y'all looking at me all funny and everything. I ain't studying y'all anyway. God uses love to cause us to win. You got a problem at home? Love through it. Love is giving. Love is kind. If I, I don't know, do you, do you have the KJV baby girl? Read it for me real quick. Grab a mic and read it for daddy. Real quick. Go ahead, go ahead with uh, uh, verse 3. Your key self. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, she, oh, I got some nerves for her now. <laughs> go ahead, my boo thing. Uh, <laughs> go Bishop, ahead. stay focused. Read for your daddy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> she does. She walks around the house and says, is that my daddy home? That's what she said. That's my daddy. No, That's I what don't. she told me. No, I don't. That's what he wants me to Come say. Come on, girl. I'm trying to finish this message. Yes, sir. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 13. Oh, I'm Chapter sorry. 13. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Uh, oh, uh, 13. Okay. 1 Corinthians 13. 13, 3. 3, yes. Okay. I have it in two seconds. You just hold on, Dad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I have it. Thank you so much. She's so used to it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Big Daddy, yes, sir. Uh, if I, thank you, ma'am. If I give you all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Wow. Hold up. That means I can work in the pantry. I can usher. I can sing. I can clap. I can help people. And the Bible says if I don't have love in another area of my life, I got no benefit from all that service work. That means I can nullify my blessing with one action of meanness. Now you see why a lot of people aren't getting everything they deserve? Yeah, you, you're benefiting, you're doing all this work, but your attitude ain't right. And God says, you can do all of that, but if you're not nice, if you don't have a good attitude in every area, don't treat us differently here than you treat the people at home. You're nasty to people at home, and you come smiling here. No, you got to have the same spirit in everything. That is a Pharisee. That is a spiritual hypocrite. Your family ought to validate who you are in here. Hey, Bishop, and you are, and listen, don't treat me differently than you treat anybody else. Don't be, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I bind the spirit of phoniness. That's a phony spirit. That's a phony spirit. All of us serve the same God. All of us love Jesus. All of us love God. You don't treat a bishop or a pastor or an elder or a minister any different than you treat the people in your environment. God sees that and will stop your blessing. Will stop your blessing because you are so much loving up here, but ain't loving down there. God says it doesn't work that way. Go ahead, baby girl. We got to get out of here. I only got 30 seconds. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, read, 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 read. Love is patient. Okay, what is what? Love is patient. So, so now, now watch this. Okay, all right, I'm going to do this test. I love doing this test. I got to go. All right, everybody who says you love somebody, lift your hands up. Lift them up. Lift them up. You say you love. Keep them up. 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 If you hear something that is not you, put your hand down. Uh -oh. Ready? All right, <laughs> we're going to do a church test. Uh-uh. Ready for the church test? 
<laughs> All right? Now, and don't give yourself a break. Don't be saying, well, you know. All right, here we go. Number one, read. Love is what? Patient. All right? If that's not you, put your hand down now. That's all right, keep going. Somebody put the hand down and put it up. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you can't go to number two and avoid number one. Yes, sir. Keep going. Go ahead. Love is kind. Uh-huh. Not just kind when you want to be kind. Yeah. Kind when you don't want to be kind. Kind when they're not kind to you. Keep going. It does not envy. All right, love is not jealous of other people. That jealousy, let me tell you, that jealousy spirit is a wild spirit. Jealousy was the reason for the first murder in the Bible. That's the first reason for somebody getting killed in the Bible, which means it's a lot more prevalent than what we want to admit. Because the problem with jealousy is most people, when they're jealous, don't admit they're jealous or don't know they're jealous. Let me give you the 10 seconds. You know you're jealous when you keep pointing out somebody else's flaws. Whenever you point out consistently somebody else's flaws, what they don't do right, why the hands went down. <laughs> when you point out somebody's flaws, when you constantly talk about what somebody doesn't do right, when you constantly talk about what somebody isn't doing, when you po constantly point the finger at somebody's inadequacy, it really means you are jealous. Wow. All right, keep going, baby girl. It does not boast. Uh-huh, so I'm not arrogant. Keep going. It is not. I got a better car than you. My <laughs> man better than yours. Oh, no. I got a man you don't. Oh, no. <laughs> keep going. It is not proud. Uh-huh, keep going, keep going. It does not dishonor others. Woo. It is not. That means I have respect. That means I'm respectful to people. That means I don't walk in a room and shake your hand and not your hand. Yes, yes. That's good, Bishop. I'm not disrespectful. Come on, it's Christmas Eve, let's go. It, it, it is not self-seeking. That means I'm not, everything is not about me getting my way. Amen. It's not about me getting my way, what can you do? There, let me tell you something, let me give you a revelation. If you got people in your life that when you don't do for them or you can't give them their way, they turn their back on you, get away from them. Uh -uh. As a bishop, I see it all the time. I always can tell if they, people come in and come from other churches and they got ideas or people come and they always want something. And I learned a long time ago, let them chill, let, let, let them chill for a little while. Because <laughs> patience is the weapon that it reveals, reveals deception. Yes. Deception is always proven by patience. The one thing the devil cannot do is wait. The devil wants his way, and when he doesn't get his way, you will see yourself all on Facebook. They will tweet about, and for me, I don't get upset. I just say, God, thank you. Because I, I'd rather them not have a place or a position in my life or my heart and tell me off than me put them in a prime position and they break my heart. Thanks for watching the City of Praise Ministries broadcast. To purchase this message in its entirety, visit cityofpraisechurch.com. The City of Praise Family Ministries.